Hello, my Year 11 ESL group. Um, so welcome to week four of online learning. And this week we are going to focus on exercise six, which is uh, report writing. So this is a form of semi-formal writing. When I say semi-formal, I mean mostly formal. It will be perhaps 80% formal and maybe 20% with some more informal features. So remember on exercise six, you could be asked to write one of three texts. So you could be asked to write an article, which we've studied. You could be asked to write reviews, which we've studied. Remember when we did Modern Family and Stranger Things. Um, and finally, you could be asked to write a report, which is what we're going to focus on this week. So after we've done this, we will have learned all of the three text types that you need to know for your ESL exam. Actually, the three texts, they're relatively similar, um, just some small structural and, and audience changes. Before we get started, then, I want to tell you what we're going to do this week. Um, so this week, as I said, we're going to focus on report writing. So on Monday, your task is to watch this video that you're watching right now and answer the quiz that I made. On Tuesday and Wednesday, you're going to have some group writing and speaking time. On Thursday, you are going to have feedback from me and you're going to improve your work. And then on Friday is going to be the deadline for your group redraft. And that's also when your notebook check is going to happen. Um, so a quick word then about the notebook check, because we have changed the assessment ever so slightly. <clears throat> Let me show you guys the, the mark scheme for that. <coughs> Pardon me. So this here is, is the mark scheme. Um, and we've decided to add a little bit to it. So it was going to be... Um, mainly based on your notes, but now we've decided to add some extra elements to it. So you get a total mark out of 10 and uh, two marks out of five within that. So the first mark is for assignments. So if you've submitted all your assignments on time, then you'll get a five. So you've turned all of your assignments in and you've never been late, five. All assignments are turned in, but some are late, four. Most assignments are turned in, three. Maybe you've missed some. Less than half of the assignments have been submitted and only a few assignments have been submitted. Um, if you are not sure if you're missing any assignments, then message me. Because if you're currently at a three, most of your assignments are turned in, you can make that become a four if you do your assignments but they're late, right? Um, and then you're going to get a mark for your activities and notes. So to get a five, it says student actively contributes to group discussions and class activities every day. Notes are thorough and show evidence of sustained effort. Um, so by that, I mean, when we have discussions or flip grids or activities, you are commenting, you're replying to people. And then this bit here about your notes, we'll discuss again in a second. Four. Student contributes to group discussions and class activities almost every day. Notes show evidence of meaningful work almost every day. So notice you are pretty much perfect, say 80 to 90%, but that 10 to 20%, you're not doing everything that you should be. Three, student sometimes contributes to uh, group discussions and class activities. Some notes are taken. Two, student contributes to class discussions and activities less than half of the time. Some notes will be taken, but many gaps. Um, so at three, you are contributing some of the time and you have made some notes, but maybe it's not perfect. There are quite a lot of mistakes. Maybe you're ignoring your teacher sometimes. For two, it says um, student contributes to class discussions and activities less than half the time. Some notes are taken, but many gaps. So here you're really starting to not do your work, missing lots of notes, not really engaging. And for one, student rarely contributes to discussions and activities, little to little or no evidence of notes. So maybe you don't submit your notes. Maybe the notes that you submit are rubbish. Maybe you're never commenting back to your teacher. 
Um, here's some advice about what it might look like for you to contribute actively. So when we have video meetings, be active by turning on your video camera. Same for Flipgrid. When we're having these video meetings and you're not showing your face, it makes me feel really awkward and I just feel like I'm talking to a black screen and you're not really listening. When your video camera's turned off, perhaps you could be on your mobile phone, perhaps you could be not even in the room, right? So turn on your video camera. Ask questions and share your thoughts freely. So ask me questions, ask your peers questions, talk in the private chat channels. Doing the assigned tasks every day seems very simple, but we're not doing that every day. So make sure you're completing all of your work and you're doing it on time without me needing to message you every single day saying, hey, blah, 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 where's your work? Um, next, replying to classmates on group discussions, even when it's not required. So if you see your classmates asking questions or making comments, and you know that I'm in the UK, so I'm not going to be online until 4 p.m. China time, you reply to them, you help them out. I like this one a lot. Liking your classmates and teachers posts with a heart or other emojis to show them that you've read your that you've read their post. When I post on Teams, if you just like what I've written, that makes me feel happy because it shows that I know that you've read it and I can relax. I know that you've got the message and you're going to do your work. Giving feedback to your classmates in your neighbours group channel, that's your private Teams chat. And replying to me when I send you a message. If I'm messaging you and you're ignoring me, that's a very bad sign and you're going to get a low mark. So take one final look at this mark scheme. You can pause the screen here if you want to see it in more detail. That is what you're going to be assessed on on Friday. Okay, um, so let's go into the introduction to report writing lesson then. So hopefully this makes a little bit more sense now that we've spoke about the mark scheme. But yep, on Friday, you're going to send me your notes and I'm also going to give you a score for your active learner. OK, um, and all of the week is going to be dedicated to note, uh, report writing in groups. So when we're thinking about the structure of a report, this is how it should look. So your report needs to have a title at the top, which should usually be written in the center and underlined. And it should have subheadings. Subheadings are smaller titles, usually just two are needed. And usually you can get the subheadings from the keywords in the exam question. Bullet points can be used to highlight key information um, when appropriate. And remember to use linking words to join your ideas. Words like furthermore, consequently, on the other hand, despite this. Um, now we're going to compare the purpose, audience, register and task um, of the exercise sixes. Remember that you could be asked to write an article, a review or a report. So pause this video now and think what is the purpose, audience, register and task usually for articles? So for articles, here is a sample question. In your English class, you have had a discussion about whether it is better to go abroad or stay in your own country for a holiday. Here are two comments from your students, from students in your class. I love going to another country and learning about its culture. I think flying is bad for the environment. Write an article for your teacher giving your views. So now let's think about the purpose audience register for this task. So this task is for a holiday and you're going to be discussing whether it's better to go abroad or whether it's better to stay in your own country. This is basically going to be the two main paragraphs of your article, right? You're going to have an introduction, a paragraph for, a paragraph against and a conclusion. So what's the purpose? Why are you writing it? Well, you're writing it to give your views on the discussion that you had in your English class. So it's important to mention that discussion in your English class. And obviously, you've not really had that discussion. You can lie. That's fine. It's not a truth telling test. It's a writing test. Who's your audience? Your audience is your teacher. Well, that's going to make the register semi formal, right? 
because with your teacher, you're going to be relatively formal. You're not going to speak using slang, but you do have a relationship with that person. You are close to them. So it's not going to be very, very formal as if you're writing a university um, application letter or something. The structure is going to be like a discursive essay. This is most similar to something that you would do in an IELTS test. So it will look like this. You'll have a hook and an introduction. Paragraph two will be reasons to go abroad. Paragraph three will be reasons to stay in your own country. And paragraph four will be a conclusion where you give your own opinions. So your final decision. So here is a sample question for a review. We've done a lot of reviews, so hopefully this should be quite familiar to you. You recently saw a film. You have now decided to write a review of the film for the school magazine. Here are some comments for the other students who saw the film. I loved the special effects. I didn't understand the story. Write a review of the film giving your views. Um, Actually, I think this is the one that we did as an assessment. Most of you guys did the film Stranger Things or the film Modern Family. Mm, yeah, I think this should be quite familiar to you. Um, so the task then is to write a review of the film. Now, really important with reviews that you remember to use the past tense. If it's a review, that means you have seen the book, you have watched the film, you have watched the TV show, you have been to the theatre, right? It's all things that you have done in the past and now you're talking about it in the present. So anything describing the, the text or the film should be in the past and your present opinions can be in the present tense. But really important not to say, I watch a film called Stranger Things. It is very good. The character is very interesting, right? We should be using past tense because you've watched it in the past. <clears throat> the purpose then is to give your views of the film that you recently saw. So your opinion, right? That's the main purpose. What is your opinion? And also potentially whether or not you should recommend it to other students, right? Because for this one, your audience is schoolmates, teachers or parents. And we know that because you're being asked to write it for the school magazine. So you're trying to think whether or not you recommend that film to those people and why. And therefore, the register, the language should be semi-formal. Um, because if you're writing a review in the school magazine, you're not going to be very, very casual because your teachers and parents could read it. Um, however, it's not as formal as writing directly to your headmaster, right? Because most of your audience is going to be other teenagers your age. Therefore, your language should be semi-formal. The structure, I hope that you can remember this, is going to be an introduction um, where you talk about the plot of what you've watched or read. So that should be a very brief summary, no more than two to three sentences so that your reader knows the basic plot of what you've watched. Paragraph one will be things you liked, the advantages. Paragraph three will be things you didn't like, the disadvantages. And paragraph four will be your conclusion, your recommendation. Um, so you can see that so far the structure is really similar um, to article writing. So now we're coming on to our final uh, text type, which is reports. Have a think then what you guess the purpose, audience, register and task might be for a report. Pause the screen now and have a think. Um, let's have a look at a sample question. So this is what a report might look like. You recently went on a school trip. Your teacher has asked you to write a report about the trip and make suggestions for next year. Here are two comments from your classmates. I wish we hadn't had to do so many things. The people we met were really helpful. Write a report for your teacher giving your views. So um, this is actually going to be the practice that we do um, for this week. Um, and as such, all of the speaking that you did last week about expeditions, and most of you spoke about IA, you can use those ideas in this report question. Now, you'll have noticed that so far in these exercise sixes, the layout is all the same. 
They give you your task and then they give you two comments of basically pros and cons, advantages and disadvantages. Now, CIE put those there for you to get some ideas of what to talk about. And you can use those ideas in your article. But if you only use those ideas, then you're going to get a lower mark. OK, so it's important to try to include some of your own ideas, too. Let's think now about the purpose, audience, register and task of reports. Um, so the purpose is to give your views, your opinions on the school trip you recently went on. Quite similar to review so far, right? That's your opinion. The audience, again, is your teacher. So it's quite common for CIE to say things like your teacher, your, um, your head teacher, school magazine, report to students, um, and also young people in your local area. Those are the most common audiences. Um, and so therefore, once again, the register is semi-formal. Um, and the task is going to be to write a report about the trip and also to make suggestions for next year. So important not to forget point two, that you're making suggestions. Here are some more report writing questions um, so that you guys can see some more examples of what you might be asked to write. Um, just pause the screen now and have a read of them. Have a think about who's the audience. So we've got your teacher, your head teacher, and local government. So all of these would create quite a formal tone. Perhaps you would be more formal for a head teacher and even more formal again for your local government. So really think about who is your audience and how does that change your language? So the register would be semi-formal or formal. I would say pretty much 100% formal if you're writing to local government. Um, usually you will be asked to give suggestions in your report. Suggestions means things that could be improved. So here are some structures that you could use in your report. I suggest that we do something. I suggest that we improve the food. I propose doing something. I propose improving the food. Our proposal is to do something. Our proposal is to improve the food. Notice the way that the verbs change here, okay, to fit each sentence structure. I would like to put forward the idea of doing something. According to our findings, it might be a good idea to do something. There would be many benefits if we did something. Doing something would be very beneficial. Many problems could be solved by doing something. The key to solving this problem is to do something. The bottom line is we need to do something. So please pause the screen now and make some notes. I want you to use some of these structures in your report. And it's also a good idea to remember some of them for your exam. Make sure that you know how to use these words correctly. So some students suggested um, something. So some students suggested a homestay instead. Somebody suggested that we do something. So we should buy ingredients from the local market. Um, buying, staying in the hotel regardless of that smell, blah, blah, blah. So for example, we could say the majority of the students advise the school to organize a trip to Disneyland instead. The majority of students advised against wasting time and money in local shopping malls. And the majority of students advised a passport be carried at all times. Um, some final examples of words that you should know how to use correctly. Insist. A few students insisted. A few students insisted on, notice that preposition on, taking the maglev to the airport. A few students insisted activities be planned during the free time at night. Another useful word is recommend or recommended. One of the students recommended visiting the British Museum in London. 
one of the students recommended we try the local speciality in the food street. And finally, it is that. So, it is observed that, it is believed that, it is understood that, it is guaranteed that. This is helping you to use what we call passive voice. This means that you avoid saying, I believe that, I observe that. And it makes you sound more formal, less personal, less like you're being argumentative with the person you're writing to or advising. So once again, this is the question that we're going to write this week as a group. Um, so your class recently went on a trip to another country where you stayed in an unusual type of accommodation. Your teacher has asked you to write a report on the trip. In your report, say what you saw in the local area and suggest how the accommodation could be improved if the trip is repeated next year. Here are two comments from other students in your class. The trip was too long and there was nothing left to see after two days. Our accommodation was not very comfortable. Write a report for your teacher. The comments above may give you some ideas. You can also use some ideas of your own. Your report should be between 150 and 200 words long. You will receive up to eight marks for the content of your report and up to eight marks for the language used. So make sure that you've um, paused this screen and make sure that you understand this question, what it means and what you're going to have to write. Now we're going to have a look at two sample responses. So two examples of how you could answer that question. Class trip to Holland. Notice we're starting off with a title and it's in the center. This class trip report will discuss the recent class trip to Holland and will also describe our accommodation and the places we visited. I hope you can use it to evaluate the trip and make changes for next year. Places of interest. Here's our first subheading and we've got that from the question. Notice places of interest, accommodation. So what you saw in the local area, places of interest and accommodation, how the accommodation could be improved. So you can literally just use the question to help you to write your subheadings. Places of interest. During this class trip, we did two main activities. When the class trip committee was planning the event, they found many interesting areas of natural beauty. However, when we were on the trip, we were disappointed to find we only had two activities planned. One the uh, on the first day, that should say. On the first day, we rode around the canals on bicycles. This was enjoyable, but it was also tiring. Then on the second day, we visited a tulip field to take pictures. Although this was very scenic, after this activity, we had nothing left to do. Many students were bored. Next year, if we do this trip again, we should include more activities such as visiting a local market or the famous art museum in the city. So notice this person has given two things that happened and also given suggestions for how it could be improved. Accommodation. The accommodation was also disappointing. When the trip was planned, it was decided that we should stay somewhere that reflected the local culture. Therefore, the trip organisers booked rooms at a windmill that had been converted to an inn. Although it seemed like a good idea during the planning, the rooms were not very satisfactory. Many students thought the smell in the rooms was terrible. Also, students found it difficult to climb the many stairs in the building. If we plan this trip again, we should consider booking more modern accommodation. So again, we've got two things that are discussed that could be that didn't go very well and suggestions for how to improve. Um, and now we've got a conclusion. Therefore, while this trip was an enjoyable one overall, if we take this trip again, we should make two changes. The first change should be to plan more activities and the second change should be to book more rooms in a modern hotel. Pause this screen now and have a think what is good about this report and is there anything that you would improve? Here is our second sample. Expedition to Bali. 
Recently, our anthropology class took a trip to learn more about the native culture of Bali. This report will outline the positive and negative aspects of the trip and make suggestions for improvement for next year. Attractions and activities. Our main purpose for this trip was to learn more about the culture of Bali. Since we stayed with native families in a homestay, this aspect was quite successful. Several students reported that they learned how to that they learned how to make traditional dishes like roasted baby pig. Oh, horrible! Roasted baby pig, really? That's what people want to eat. Would you guys eat that? Anyway, they learned how to make traditional dishes like roasted baby pig and salad with peanut sauce. Many other students said that they learned traditional dancing and children's games as well. Most students thought that we had enough to do. Although some students mentioned that they were disappointed, there was no trip to the beach planned. If the school plans this trip again next year, a trip to the beach should be included in the itinerary. Notice that this report is a lot more positive. So here instead it's saying two things that the students like and then giving one suggestion for how to improve. Accommodation. As mentioned above, most students felt that our homestays were quite comfortable. Although staying, fa although staying in family housing was awkward for some students, especially when they had to take showers outside, most felt that it was a valuable learning experience. Many students mentioned how lovely it was to share the family meal each night and talk about what they had learned with their family homestay. For this reason, the school should plan to use homestays again next year. Now, our conclusion. Overall, this trip was a valuable learning experience for all students. If the students would like to attract even more students to go on this trip next year, it is suggested that the planners include a day at the beach as part of the plan. So again, this one is much more positive and even their suggestion is, I like this, let's do it again. So it doesn't have to be super critical. Um, although you can be critical, sometimes students find it quite funny to um, make lots and lots of complaints. I don't know. I think it's easier to complain, especially in writing, um, but that's that's up to you. But if we look at these two examples, you can see that they both share in common. They've got a title at the top. They've got two subheadings which are taken from the question and they've got a short conclusion at the bottom. And each of them give two details for each sections and give at least one suggestion for each section. So if we're thinking about the structure, it, all, it always has to have a title or a heading. You have to give subtitles or subheadings which are decided from your exam question. And you should have a conclusion which summarises the information you give and you can also give an opinion or a suggestion or a recommendation for improvements. In your introduction, make sure you state the purpose and content of the report what will you discuss? So here, this report will outline the positive and negative aspects of the trip and make suggestions for improvements the next year. You can basically copy that and just uh, change it around slightly for each question that you get given. So the organisation, um, because a report is written for a specific purpose and audience, it should be planned very carefully. Number one, define the problem or the purpose of the report in the first paragraph. Number two, present the information the question is asking for with two different areas that you're going to need to discuss. Number three, include an evaluative or analytical sentence at the end of your paragraphs that clearly gives recommendation or evaluation. And number four, write your conclusion that shows clear actions you are asking your audience to take, your suggestions or recommendations. Here are some useful language structures. So it's better to use passive voice, so avoid saying I or we, if you want to sound a little bit more formal. Relative clauses are very useful to give precise detail in examples, um, for example, if you're going to talk about places or things. Modal verbs should be used, for example, should, may, must, or conditionals. If the school does blah, 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 then blah, blah, blah will result when you're making recommendations. Phrases such as, it is suggested that, and one recommendation is to, blah, 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 are quite useful too. And here are some reporting verbs that show thoughts or opinions. 
some students suggest, many students mentioned, some... <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me. Some attendees complained that other students enjoyed, it was observed that. Notice, um, like with this first point, rather than saying, I hated blah, 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 I really didn't like this, the sc- uh, I thought that the, f- the food was awful, talk about what students as a group thought, and that makes it seem more formal, you're avoiding using I and we, um, and it's a bit more polite too. So talk about students and attendees, attendees instead. Um, so this here is what your report structure should look like when you're writing it in your group. This is what you're going to do tomorrow. So I don't want you to do this today. You're going to do it tomorrow and you're going to do it in groups. You're not doing it individually. You'll give it a title at the top. Then you'll give it an introduction, a subheading, so a small title and a paragraph, a subheading and a paragraph, and then a smaller conclusion. So then just to summarise and remind you guys what we are doing this week. On Monday, you are going to watch this video and answer the quiz. That's all you're doing. You are not writing your report on Monday. You're definitely not writing it individually. Okay, so Monday, just watch this video and answer the quiz. That is it. Tuesday and Wednesday, you are going to write your report as a group. So you're going to have a video call and you're going to together write your response and post that in your private Teams channels. I'll give you more information about the expectations um, and how to do that on Tuesday morning. So don't worry about that until Tuesday. And you'll have all of Tuesday and Wednesday to write it because it's quite a big task and it can be kind of difficult when you have got um, four people all trying to work together. That's why you've got two days. Um, Thursday, you're going to have um, feedback from me. So by Thursday, I will have looked at all of your group uh, writing and given you um, suggestions for how to improve. And then as a group, you're going to improve it. And then on Friday, you're going to submit your final group redraft. So your final improved version as a group. And also on Friday is going to be your notebook check and your attitude check. <laughs> So on Friday, you're also going to need to submit your notes and I'm also going to give you grades on your performance so far. So that's everything. If you guys have got any questions, then please email me. Um, sorry, please don't email me. Please send me a message on, uh, on Teams chat and I can try to help you all. That's it. Bye bye.